Turn to your neighbor left and right. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, wait on the Lord. Say it again. Say it to yourself twice. Wait on the Lord is the package our Father has for us this morning. This faithful Sunday. Wait on the Lord. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting on the Lord is one of the challenging things. Many persons are wrestling with. Many are wrestling with. Yes. It is a serious subject. That we all must treat it with care. We must handle it with care. Waiting on the Lord. How long we have to wait is not defined. But we are called to wait on him. So interesting that there is no time bound attached to it. That you are believing God for marriage. Believing God for a wonderful family. But you don't know when that time will take place. When it will happen. You are believing God for your own house. But you don't know when. And above all, you are believing God for his coming. But you don't know when he will come. You don't know that time, that day, or the second, that our Father will come. And the word says, even angels do not know. But we are called up to wait on him. To wait on the Lord. Let us turn to Psalms number 27. Psalms number 27, verse 13 and 14. We get the words of an outstanding child of God. We get the words of a successful worker of God. We uncover in verse 13, verse 14, why David was so successful. Why David, who lived here on earth as we are today, was so powerful, so powerful, so outstanding. Why? Because David had good mastery of this principle of waiting on the Lord. The things that made David so outstanding, so powerful, so su successful. He had good mastery on waiting on the Lord. If you can embrace this principle, the rest of your life, success is your name. You are not here. You will enjoy the same power that he enjoyed. He is the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. He is a faithful God. Verse 13. I would have lost heart. I, speaking for himself, David. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I, David, would have lost hearts unless I believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
In other words, seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living is what kept him going. Is what kept him going. Is what repositioned his heart. His desire to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If not, the heart would have left him. The land of the living. If not of waiting on the Lord in order to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The land where there is no death. Everyone lives forever. Many today in the world have lost the heart. Many today are without the heart. The heart is gone. That's why we hear all kinds of things. That's why we see all kinds of things today. Because the heart is gone. Where is your heart, child of God? Have you lost your heart? Where is your heart? Today, many youths have lost their heart. And they are deeply involved in scamming or quick money, quick money, quick money. They do not care where they will end. They are deeply involved in drugs. Today we hear all kinds of names of drugs. They have lost their heart. If not of my desire to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have lost my heart. Where is your heart, child of God? You may be here looking at me, but your heart is not here. You have lost your heart. You may be the first person in church every day, but you have lost your heart. And of course, if your heart is lost, it means your heart is in the hands of Satan. It means it's the devil that is controlling your heart. It is lost because where it's supposed to be is not there. And if it's not with God, it is in the hands of the devil. You're involved in things that you don't like, but that you do. You don't understand yourself anymore. Your heart is gone. Today, if you rise up and cry to Jesus and say, Father, show me mercy and recover me, Daddy, he will do it for you. Nobody can cry for you. That's why I've been mandated to come here this morning to help you out, rise up aggressively and shout it, my daddy, I know you have resurrected. You are the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. You are alive and active. Help me out. You that has not lost your heart, what he wants from you today is to wait on him. Be diligent with that principle. When we look at the world today, adults, parents, most have lost their heart. You see, adults now involved in all kind of cults, open cults, hidden cults. The society is loaded with cults. Loaded with cults. Child of God, where is your heart? Where is your heart, child of God? Look at verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. David grabbed it. And that's why he was so successful, so outstanding. If you can grab it today and never let go, your name is success. Your name is victory. You are not here. Say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Not just courage. Good courage. Let your courage be good enough. Be of good courage. Let your courage be at a level. Not just courage. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. When you wait on the Lord and you are of good courage, there is a guarantee 
that the Lord will strengthen your heart by day, by night. When you wait on the Lord, of good courage, he that created you and created everything and sent you and I to this world, there is a guarantee that he will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. You will run and never be weary. He will run and not stumble. He will strengthen you. When the Lord is your strength, what can stand against you? When the Lord is your strength, which giant can challenge you? David, as a young man, understood this concept. He made use of, made use of this concept. Before the giant Philistine, Goliath, David, as a young man, was able to lower him down. Why? Because the Lord was his strength. He waited on the Lord at all times. And it's revealed unto us. We should wait on the Lord. If we want to emerge victorious, we should anchor on this principle. On the Lord. He ends 14b with the same principle. Wait. I say on the Lord. Wait. I say on the Lord. Not on your money. Because if David had just said wait, you would think that ah, he says wait on your parents. Wait on your money. Wait on your government. And so on. Not your government. Not your parents. Not your sister. Not your neighbor. He said what? On the Lord. Are you still there? You wait on any other thing out of the Lord. Yes, is your name. You wait on anything out of the Lord. Disappointment is your name. When you wait on him, you are sure. But you wait on anything of this world. Hey, neighbor. You have crashed. It's a day to re-examine where your heart is. What you are waiting on. And reposition yourself. Reposition yourself. Reposition yourself. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He is your creator. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who has sent you here. You did not choose to be here now. He is the one. He says, wait on him. If you are created yourself, then don't wait on him. If you are the one who has decided to be here now, don't wait on him. And many persons have refused to wait on the Lord. You know that this direction you are taking, this, the, 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 the door that you are taking into this marriage is not the right door. But because you need marriage badly, you jump into, and the next day you start running from one man of God to another. Because you rejected the principle. Wait! I say on the Lord. The words of an outstanding servant of God. The words of a successful servant of God. The word of someone who is rejoicing above. If you have ears, you hear. Let us turn to Psalms number 5, verse 3. Psalms number 5, verse 3. Follow attentively. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. David brings out something extraordinary. What he does every morning. And after doing that, his frame of mind. My voice you shall hear in the morning. He's talking with his father. This is my voice, sir. You shall hear in the morning. Oh, Lord, my daddy. You shall hear in the morning. This is my voice. You shall hear me. Every morning you will hear me. All the time you will hear me. That's why the songwriter says, Anytime I see another breaking of a second, I give you glory, daddy Jesus. I give you praise. 
seen a new second, seen a new hour, seen a new day. He says, his father will hear his voice. My voice you shall hear in the morning, oh Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you. I will direct. Directing what? Answer me. Directing what? Directing everything that he has in his heart unto who? To the Lord. Whatever he has as a request, he directs to who? To the Lord. But many of us are good at doing that. Awesome. But where many have failed today is the B part. We are good at directing. We are good at directing. Father, do me this. Father, do me that. We direct to the Lord. Father, heal me. Father, bless me. Father, I want this. I want that. Yes. But where we have failed is the B. After directing, there is something extraordinary that we see in the life of David. And I will look up. <laughs> After directing, he reposes himself. He looks up. Now look at me. Looking up to God is without condition. Meaning he is looking up to God. It is God that has the final say. God can answer at any time. Fine. He can answer any way he wants. Fine. He does not condition God. He does not wait to receive the answer the way it went to him. No. In other words, after directing, he waits on the Lord. Waits on the Lord. He waits on the Lord without condition. Many persons today, when they direct to God, they start waiting the next day and they want to see it the way they directed to God. And when it's not forthcoming, they twitch, they compromise, and they go to the devil. When it's not forthcoming, they say goodbye to God. The heart is gone. God. You can imagine how interesting this world will look like if God was to answer our request the way we channel them this one will say father Jesus please just give me only 100 million only 100 million sir I know you can do it you say whatever I ask your name you will answer the other one will say father Jesus only give me 200 million sir only 200 200 sir that's all I need Another one is crying on the other side, Father, give me 350 million. Another one is crying, on the, Father, give me 500 million. Somebody is crying for what? One billion. Because when we are making the request, nobody asks for something small. Am I communicating? No one asks for something small. Everyone go for, goes for something extraordinary, something big. Just imagine that God was to release these millions that we ask. How would this world look like? Now, in the, when we make requests to God, there is no one that makes and stands on the position of a servant. Everyone wants to be a master. Everyone wants to be a master. A master. Are you still there, somebody? The Lord is good. Today, you will hardly get this kind of prayer, prayer points in the morning. When somebody will rise up and say, Father Jesus, oh, Daddy, I thank you for this day. I bless you for this day. You have given this day to me for your plan. Father, let your plan alone prevail in my life today. Let me go through this day according to your plan, sir. You hardly get this kind of prayer points. Are you there, somebody? What is common is... Father, I thank you for today. 
I thank you for yesterday. Yesterday you blessed me. I'm so grateful. Yesterday I saw 100,000. Today, Father, let me say 300,000 for your glory. Amen. Ah, am I correct? And what is bad with that prayer? Is because you neglect the will of God. You don't care about the customers that he sent to you. He sent to you not only for you to collect money, but for you to give them something and you fail in giving them what you ought to have given them. He sent them to you so that they may receive the truth, they may receive the word of God. But your focus was on money, money, money. Your interest was only on quality money. And you don't care where you will end and where your customers will end. Return to the point of waiting on the Lord. Return, child of God. If you return to the point of waiting on the Lord, then the customers, you will spend your time talking to them about the word of God, feeding them with the word of God, knowing that you are provided and live it. The one that takes care of you in the morning, in the afternoon, Jehovah Jireh, he's alive. He will not, you will not lack anything. He will provide to you. But even when one of them is interested, for you to spend time, you say, no, 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 go, 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 go. I have so many customers to attend because you want to collect more money. Let your light so shine. Before all your customers, before all your colleagues, before all your friends, before all your neighbors, before all the ones you meet in the taxi, in the bus, in the train, you meet by air so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father that is in heaven. Wait on the Lord. Let us return to the of waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. The Lord is good. Let us turn to John 14. John chapter number 14. Verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter number 14, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. <clears throat> believe also in me. <clears throat> the words of our Father Jesus himself. Let not your heart be troubled. Many persons have allowed their heart to be troubled today. And what is making your heart trouble? The things of the world. What you eat, what you wear, the car you ride, the kind of house, and so on. The things of this world. Let not your heart be troubled. If your heart is troubled, child of God, return to the point of waiting on the Lord. There's a guarantee. He that waits on him shall be strengthened by second. Strengthened by day, by night. Verse 2. In my father's house are many answer me. Are many mansions if it were not so, I would have answer me. I go to prepare for who? I go to prepare a place for you. The words of our Father Jesus Christ. I go to prepare a place for you. This is the very first Sunday. After we have celebrated the power that resurrected our daddy Jesus from the tomb. Sunday number one. So we have 
celebrated the power that resurrected him the third day. And this is an awakening because our daddy has prepared the mansions already. He left long ago, many years ago. The mansions have been prepared. All the signs of his coming, we can see them. We can see the signs that he is already on the way. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. You who? You who, who waits on him? The you here is referring for that one, referring to that one that waits on him. The one that waits on the Lord. If you are that one that waits on him, then he's referring to you. That one that is living a kingdom life. That one that is serving him in spirit and in truth. It's you. How should we wait on the Lord, child of God? How should we wait on the Lord? Look at me and hear me out. By action. By doing. By fulfilling. The will of God. It is not by folding your arms and saying you are waiting on the Lord. It is by doing his will. Look at verse 4. So outstanding. Where I go, you know. The way, you know. Where our father is, we know. Yes or no? Answer me. The way to where he is, we know. Our father has gone to heaven. He's in heaven. Seated at the right hand of his father. Preparing to come. The way, we know. What is the way? His word. That's the way. His word. Waiting on the Lord is putting the word of God to practice. Waiting on the Lord is acting on his words. Acting on the way. One day, one day we shall see him. We shall meet him. Are you there somebody? One day we shall see him. We shall meet him. When you act on his word, then you are waiting on the Lord. Acting on the word without reservation. That is the only way to make heaven a last. That's the only way, child of God. Setting your, your mind on the things that are not seen. Neglecting all the things that we see. Set your eyes, your mind, everything has to do with you, on the things above. And you are sure. And you can say, yes, I am waiting on the Lord. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Colossians 3 verse 2 wants us to set our hearts on the things above. John 4 24 says we should do what? You want to worship him? It must not be ordinary. You must do it in spirit and in, in truth. Temple. Look at me. That's where the challenge is. Because in this end time, not all that you see are temples of God. And you will not have an excuse for worshiping at the wrong temple. You have to identify his temple and worship him there. That's when you can say, you are waiting on the Lord. In Luke 24, verse 53, Luke 24, 53, 
He says the disciples continually. The disciples were continually what? In the temple, doing what? Praising and blessing God. Where? In the temple. Praising and blessing God. If you are not that one that worship him in his temple, praising him and blessing him, then you are not waiting on the Lord. And if you do that in the wrong place, on that day there will be no excuse. Remember, Adam tried to give an excuse, but failed. Eve tried and failed. It is not today that you will try and succeed. The way out is to embrace the truth. When you are praising him, glorify his name, at the right place, then you can say you are waiting on the Lord. Are you see there? Let us turn to Isaiah, chapter number 40. We oh, begin to see some extraordinary things to help you out, make heaven at last. Are you there, somebody? Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. Isaiah 40. Verse 28 to 31. Have you not known? Mm -hmm. Have you not heard the everlasting God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Mm -hmm. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. Have you not heard? You are hearing it right now. There cannot be an excuse tomorrow. Are you still there? Yes. The everlasting king, our all and all. Neither what? Thanks, nor no. is weary. Right on, God bless you. There is no searching of his understanding. 29. He gives power to the weak mm -hmm. and to those who have no might, in, he increases strength. To those who have no what? No might. He does what? He increases strength. Thank you. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, but those who wait on the Lord. Look at me. The Bible. Is so special about the youths here. The verse 30. He said, even the youths. The youths are those who are strong. They are full of energy. Are you there, somebody? But the Bible is giving a guarantee here that even them shall faint. They will be powerless. Even the youths shall do what? Shall faint. And be weary, and a young man shall what? Utter it for. Even them. It means anyone that waits on the youth, you cry. You depend on human power, you will cry. Wait on the Lord. Right on, God bless you. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew the strength. Follow, that. Follow, follow attentively. Follow attentively. Right on. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. The condition to renew your strength is only on waiting on the Lord. What happens to all who wait on the Lord? They enjoy God's power. They enjoy God's power. Renew that sense. They shall mount up with what? With wings as what? Eagles. Look at me. Something I've studied. It says, those who wait on him shall mount up with wings as eagle. The eagle has been endowed with power to get to great heights above the enemy yes or no answer me and if the lord is saying you shall mount up that one that waits for him 
shall mount up wings as eagle. It means that one will be endowed with power to rise to great height above the enemies. Are you there, somebody? Power that will take you very high above your enemies. And if that is your standing from today, then you have embraced in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. The eagle has endowment from above to go at great height and cross whatever ocean in respective of the current it will cross over. Cross whatever fire in respective of the temperature of the fire. The eagle has the ability to go very high and cross over. The eagle has ability to go and cross over every mountain. Are you still there? What is the meaning of this? It means that that one that waits on the Lord, the same power to overcome whatever mountain that will come your way, you will overcome, you will go through it. You will go through fire, you will go through water. It shall by no means bend you, you shall by no means drown. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Like eagles. Whatever mountain that comes, you will go. Cross over. Whatever fire, you will go through. You enjoy. Cross power. The Lord is good. And all the time. And they tell you, enjoy God's goodness. God's goodness, Lamentation 3, 25. If you want to enjoy the goodness of God, it is in this principle. Wait on the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is for those who wait on him. Lamentation 3, 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The goodness of the Lord is for those who wait on him. So if you are out and you want to enjoy his goodness, you are wasting your time. The goodness of the Lord is for those who wait for him. And this goodness is not limited. It means in your health you will see his goodness. Your finances you will see his goodness. Your marriage you will see his goodness. Materially, you will see his goodness. In all aspects, you will see the goodness of the Lord. You will enjoy his goodness. For those who wait on him. It means if you are not waiting on him and you are expecting healing, you are expecting healing in vain. You will not receive it. You are expecting breakthrough. It's in vain. That's why many persons for years, they say, well, and many have gone into wrong places multiplying their pain the goodness of the Lord for those who wait for him if you think you can get goodness out of the Lord it can only be tears anything out of the Lord is pain if you want goodness, child of God, wait on the Lord. You want blessings, wait on the Lord. Healing, wait on the Lord. Breakthrough, wait on the Lord. Children, wait on the Lord. Marriage, wait on the Lord. Anything out of this, shame is your name. You cry from one level to another. The way out is waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. What happens? Those who wait on the Lord, they shall enjoy what? His kingdom forever. Shall enjoy the mansion. He has prepared a mansion. For all who are waiting on him. I'm very sure. Look at me, child of God. If there is something, if there is a message, 
we get from the story of Lazarus it is that of waiting on the Lord if there is something extraordinary about the story of Lazarus is that of waiting on the Lord Lazarus in spite of his condition he waited on the Lord he waited on the Lord he enjoyed the strength of the Lord his strength was renewed he enjoyed supernatural strength he enjoyed God's power he enjoyed God's goodness and finally he made it to heaven finally he's rejoicing in heaven wait on the Lord child of God is the way out when we look at the sisters Martha and Mary when we look at John 11 we look at 21 through 26 we see the encounter of Martha and Mary sisters who waited on the Lord the same principle the same cause waiting on the Lord master if you were here my brother would not have died but I still believe that whatever you say your father in heaven will answer waiting on the Lord even when Jesus told Martha that hey don't worry your brother will resurrect she said yes I know that on the last day Lazarus is going to resurrect on the last day you see that's somebody who is waiting on the Lord diligent with the word she had a good grip of the word she knew that her relationship with Lazarus Lazarus in all Lazarus had been waiting and Lazarus will make it at last but verse 26 Jesus told her I am the resurrection I am I am the resurrection let us wait on the Lord child of God wait on the Lord let us return to the point of waiting on the Lord let us say no to these things of the world that are swallowing many these things of the world that are swallowed many and are still swallowing many let us say no to them when we look at the life of all we celebrate in this precious book is it Abraham is it Isaac is it Israel is it Enoch is it Elijah is it Moses is it Paul so many of them why are we celebrating them because they lived here on earth as we are today and they lived waiting on the Lord waiting on the Lord we can confirm that they all enjoy supernatural strength we can confirm that they all enjoy supernatural power we can confirm that they enjoy God's goodness that's why we are saying Abraham's blessings are mine I am blessing the morning I am blessing the evening they all enjoy God's goodness and look at me they all made it at last they finished well they made it to heaven at last look at me child of God wait on the Lord again I say wait on the Lord and you are sure you are sure to enjoy the same encounters as they enjoyed for our father God Almighty change it not be wise as you run this race this Christian race in order to make it 
at last. Amen.